Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Shane. Today we're gonna to start a brand new series of videos repurposing old computers for something new. Now, this particular computer I've had for a number of years, but it's not too bad. We're gonna open it up in a minute and take a look. And rather than just throwing it into landfill, today we're gonna to see whether or not we can turn it into a digital audio workstation using Linux Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a free operating system. It comes with lots of free software. We're gonna see whether or not that's a viable option for recording audio. So if you're in a band or whether or not you're doing a podcast, we're gonna see whether or not we can repurpose this old computer into something good. Let's get into it. All right, here we go. Check out that fan. I forgot I actually put this in. I've actually got one of these in my other computer that's on behind me right now. The reason I got this particular fan is the fact that it was nowhere near as loud as the stock AMD fans, which for this particular series of CPUs were terrible. Currently installed in the system, we have 16 gigabytes of HyperX RAM. Our solid state drive is the Kingston HyperX, as you can see, 120 gigabytes. So it's a small drive, but it will do for the purpose of today. We also have a mechanical old school drive in here as well. This particular graphics card, I'm pretty sure is a gigabyte Nvidia GTX 750. So it should definitely do the job. One of the great things about it is we have a HDMI port on it as well, which is fantastic because we're gonna be using it on pretty much what I use as my reference monitor for filming. So this will be a perfect connection. Check it out, we also get a PS2 port and that's not a PlayStation 2 port, that's the old school keyboard and mouse port. We also get USB 2.0 and also 3.0. The purpose of this computer before using it for this particular video series, this was my dedicated streaming box straight to YouTube. It did a great job and it worked well with the Elgato HD60. So I could either stream gaming footage or straight out of my DSLR camera or whatever straight to YouTube and it would handle it no problems at all. On this USB stick we have Ubuntu 19.04. If you're unfamiliar with how to get an ISO or an image onto a USB stick, I'll leave a link up in the cards. If you have a Mac, it'll show you how to do it nice and simply. The installation process for Ubuntu is nice and simple. Plug in your USB stick wherever it works on your computer. If it doesn't work one way, flip it around. If it doesn't work again, flip it the other way and then it will fit. It's always the way. Once your computer reboots, just look for the boot options menu. On my computer, it was F12. So once I hit F12, we simply select the actual USB disk, which is called SanDisk. And here we go. So this will start the process. Interesting, this is the first time I've ever seen this error come up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change USB ports and just try it again. One of the small bugs, but it's kind of like a large bug when you install any Linux distribution is sometimes it doesn't respond to your keyboard and mouse. I mentioned that a little bit earlier. I've tried the USB ones, it doesn't work. There's only one reason why I kept this old PS2 connector keyboard is for this exact reason. Now, if you have an adapter, you can also just use that off the USB keyboard, but this one's hardwired like this. So let's plug it in. Here we go, let's plug this in. All right. So I just came across a really interesting issue. If you have this, when you go to try this, maybe it will help you. So I thought I'd throw this in. Now I kept getting an installation issue every time I went to install Ubuntu, it wouldn't let me file format the drive at all. And I couldn't work out what was going wrong. It just kept glitching. I'll leave some information in the description. I tried it with Windows, Windows would install fine. I'd go back to the Ubuntu installer. It didn't work. I, I changed USB sticks. I changed versions of Linux, everything, nothing worked. And I was like, all right, so what's going on here? All it was in the end was the fact I needed to attach the SSD to zero. I actually had my CD-ROM or DVD drive plugged into that. So if anyone else has that same error, at least it can be fixed. Just make sure your SSD is plugged in to zero on these connectors. So here's the error that I was facing. And while I was trying to sort this out, I kind of binge watched a few of Peter Paul Chato's videos. If you don't know his channel, I'll leave a link up in the cards. This guy is awesome. Check him out. All right, now we have the system up and running. We go over on the left here and click Ubuntu software. And what we want to search for here is DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. Bang, brings up everything that we need. We want this one right here, a door. This is number five. No screenshot provided, very professional. <laughs> and then we punch in the password. And here we go, let's install this. One of the cool things about Linux is much like an Apple Mac or vice versa, it's the fact you can just plug in hardware and it should generally work. So I've got the other side of this USB cable plugged into the computer right now. 
I'm gonna plug this in and hopefully, yep, we have power. So it is on, which is awesome. Now, what I wanna do is actually open up the uh, door software. Actually, we'll go to empty template. There we go, let's use that, see what happens. All right, the audio system is the ALSA, and that would be the same as ASIO, audio signal in and out. So what we wanna do is choose the USB audio codec. We wanna choose that as well. We can change the sample rate. I always leave it at 44.1, that's usually fine. And everything else looks pretty good. And that is it. So let's go to start. And then we're good to go. So I'm gonna plug a microphone in and see how this actually sounds with a podcasting mic. We'll give it a go. All right, and we are recording. As you can see on screen, you can see the waveform coming through nice and clearly. It's got a little bit of lag, but that's just sometimes how these programs work. So you're hearing the Rode Procaster going into the Behringer Euphoria UMC22 plugged directly into the Linux computer running Ubuntu. No additional drivers, free software, which is fantastic. Now, one of the cool things about software like this, this free multi-track software, is you can put background music underneath your voice if you're doing a podcast or whatever. You can use it as a fully-fledged digital audio workstation. And while this is actually recording, I want to see what sort of system resources we are using here. So I'm going to open up System Monitor, and this will hopefully turn up over the top here. It looks like it is. So this particular system has 16 gig of RAM, and it looks to me like the CPU is going up and down a little bit, but it, yeah, it looks well within the safe zone. Uh, the memory is nice and low. I am only recording one track, obviously, as well. If you're going to be recording maybe eight at a time, something like that, then you might have higher CPU usage, but a computer like this will run it fine. I can run Uendo running 20, 30 tracks on my main digital audio workstation on my PC, uh, and this just looks so far so good. So let me know what you think. So overall, what are my thoughts about this particular setup? It works and it's free. So the biggest takeaway is unlike Windows, unlike Mac, you basically get everything that you need here for free, other than the hardware, obviously. But all the software is included for free. If you download Ubuntu or any of these other uh, distributions, you'll have access to Adore 5 as well, which is great. So you'll have a multi-track editor for free. Now, how's the stability? I haven't used it enough yet to know, but what I think I might do coming back up on the channel, I've got a lot of session projects on my main computer. I might move some of those files over to this and see how well it handles everything. So just this last little bit, I might just add some processing to my voice, see how it sounds now. Ideally, I should be wearing headphones while I do this, but I can see my signal looks good. I can visually see it both on the computer and on my little UMC22. So thanks again for watching. My name's Shane. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Catch ya.